welcome back to my channel my name is Ziki Harosa so today I've decided uh, let me choose a different um, working environment or working sector let me give IT a bit of a break because I've done so many videos about IT what to study how to study the jobs that are available so today I decided to talk about something in the medical field and I'll be talking about registered dietitians, explaining what registered dietitians are, what do they do, and how long it can take you to become a qualified registered dietitian. And basically, if you're interested in that type of content, please do carry on watching. And if you're not, go to my other videos. I have a lot of videos that provide a lot of information about different things. So let's get into the video. So what is a registered dietitian? I actually got interested in this registered dietitian topic when I was listening to a podcast. The podcast ran by two um, registered dietitians. I just forgot the podcast name, but I most probably write um, the podcast name here. So the quickest and easiest example that one of the registered dietitians that they had on the show gave it made me interested in this like wow this is actually in the medical field so what is a registered dietitian it's basically somebody who um, studies food and nutrition and then comes up with ways to help you with whatever condition or disorder or issue that you are faced with that um, is impacted by the food and the nutrition that you eat on a daily basis and the example this lady gave was a patient in the ICU department. So think about somebody who's in ICU, who is in a coma, who cannot eat, cannot drink, and they need food to survive. Obviously, we need nutrition to survive. They cannot basically survive on the injections and the water drips or the drips with whatever medication. They need actual food nutrition um, to survive. So as a dietitian, she would then go to these ICU patients, do assessments on them in terms of their height, their weight, what condition they are in, or why are they in ICU, um, what are they dealing with, the issues that they are faced and the, in that current state. And then she would then come up with a meal plan to say, this is how we'll feed this person. If it means we have to insert a tube in their nose or a tube in their mouth directly to the throat to feed them. And then that also comes into the consistency of the food. How do we then blend this food to make it, you know, um, into a water state where the nutrition of the, the nutrients in the food is still not lost. But when we feed it to the person, they do not choke, they do not die, but they get whatever they need to sustain them and to help them recover. And I thought, wow, ah, here I am thinking dietitians are people that are online posting about food or on TikTok, you get dietitians doing reviews. Um, when people do a day in the life, nutritionists and, diet nutritionists and dietitians are there saying, oh, this is so unhealthy. As a dietitian, I would never recommend this. But to think that a dietitian is behind somebody somebody's life being saved is, wow, like so interesting. So imagine if you or somebody you know is in a coma and there's somebody thinking about them that they need to eat they need to get nutrients um via food how can we do that how do we blend that food to make sure it's in a consistency that their food can their body can absorb and get all they need in order to recover but they don't only work in ICU, they also work in communities where they will assess the community and see the um, needs of that community. Um, because different communities have different issues. So, you know, um, assess the kids in that community. If they don't have like electricity, because we know there are villages where there's still not electricity, how do you provide them with the correct nutrition in order to help them be able to cook the food um, prepare the food if a, a food um, if a child is going to school how do you help that school in that particular area give um, lunches to these kids which are healthy and nutritious and you know um, make sure that these kids eat and it's things that we don't think about that even in these schools when they are giving them um, lunch 
um meals on wheels stuff like that there's, there's actually a nutritionist or a dietitian i don't know why i keep on saying nutritionist a dietitian behind there who is planning these meals to say we need all these food portions we need um protein starch veggies fruits so how do we make sure that the meals we give to these kids um have all of these food groups and it's healthy for these kids because you can obviously end up giving the kids peanut butter and jam for seven days a week the whole year but that's not nutritious kids will end up being constipated because of the bread that they eat this is most probably sometimes the only um, meal that these kids have so how do we make it you know into a good meal that will sustain them for a long time that's where you see them giving them these soup packages which you know are made from grains that would cover the starch um that also have some veggies in there uh, then give them a bit of meat if it's not meat then they would decide if soya mince is enough is it good is it nutritious for these kids is it not too salty so where exactly do dietitians work i know i've made the example of the communities and also icu but dietitians can work in different places like in corporates there are some corporates that provide um food for their staff members so obviously when you're working in a corporate, you'd also make, want to make sure that the food you give to your staff members is healthy, it's nutritious, and it's balanced in terms of being protein, starch, veggies, fruits, and all of that. Also in sports management, when these soccer players are playing soccer, they need to keep to a certain diet. So the dietitians would be there uh, advising that for their energy levels, because they are running all day long, they are training, they are in the gym. How much protein do they need to retain muscles and gain muscles and how much starch do they need how many fruits should they eat or fruit servings should they eat in a day so you see you can work in different places and different environments as a dietitian then how do you become a registered dietitian so you would need to study a bsc in diet dietics i hope i said that right or food and I know some places they call it food and nutrition science and this course is available in different institutions so you can study it at Stellenbosch, Sifako Mahato, um, KwaZulu Natal, the University of KwaZulu Natal, um, the University of Limpopo, Free State, the University of the Free State, Northwest University, University of Pretoria so these are the ones where you can study uh, BSc in dietetics and food um, technology or food nutrition. In order to be a dietitian, you need three years um, BSc degree. So you'll do a BSc degree in dietetics or food and nutrition sciences, depending on what they call it in each university. Um, so it's a three years BSc. And in order to qualify, because this is a Bachelor of Science, it means you do need to have maths from grade 12, you need to have maths, you need to have science and possibly life science. Um, life science, I know um, math and science are a must. And life science, of course, would just boost your um, matric certificate and results because you have done um life science and after completing that three-year bsc you would then need to do your honors and i saw that they also refer to it as your internship year but it is your honors and then so i'm not sure when they say internship year do you do an internship somewhere um or is it just doing your one-year honors but i think you need to graduate with a one-year honors um from a university which is a postgraduate and then after that, you need to do a registered dietitian exam. So you write an exam and you need to pass that exam. Then after that, you also need to do your community service, which is, I think, what all medical students or um, students in the medical field do, where you are assigned to a hospital and then you will go work in, in that hospital for that one year, which is community service then once you are done then you become a registered dietitian so it's three years um bsc undergraduate 
then your one year's honors which is a postgraduate you need to also write your rfd exam which i think is the registered dietitian exam and then do your community service and then after that you would be then a qualified registered dietitian so all in all it would take three years plus one um plus the community service which is about five years so five to seven years let's say to become a registered dietitian the other years would be to factor in anything that happens we know that not everyone passes like a first try past your undergrad degree that three years you know there's always something that happens in between and then the question that of course a lot of people want to know if you're studying something how much will you get paid at the end of the day um so when it comes to dietitians they can either earn around 246 rand per hour so dietitians that are also in private practice do tend to take um, to charge their clients per hour um or per consultation so say salaries tend to start at 252 and you know the maximum can be 480,000 per annum so let's just do a quick calculation of how much is that 480,000 divided by 12 it's like 40,000 so this is obviously before deductions um 40,000 rand and then 225,000 divided by 12 is like 21,000 before deductions and i'm guessing this is like a junior starting level you earn 21,000 and you could go up to 40,000 which is really not bad so thank you guys for watching this video and making it this far so don't forget to like share and subscribe bye